Hello, my nerdy friends! Welcome back to my channel! If you're new here, I'm super happy to have you! Welcome to my channel! Alright, I have a crazy freaking idea. So I'm a dungeon master for Dungeons & Dragons. As a dungeon master, I like to make most of my own stuff. I like to make most of my own table terrain, most of my own monsters. So basically, imagine if an air elemental and a kraken had a baby. This, this, this spinning air elemental tornado thing, but then it's got all these tentacles that like whip out and like grab they like whip out and like grab people off of airships and like slam into the side of airships and even like grab airships and slam them into other airships and everything. So that is the creature that I came up with for this next week's gaming session, but I needed to make some tentacles for it. Okay, so here is kind of what I came up with. Now, this is the crappiest painting job you're ever going to see on my channel ever, hopefully, because I just slapped paint on it really fast. So this isn't actually what it's going to be. I have to clean it up so much. But this is basically the idea. And um, I'm going to make eight of them and just kind of like pop them on the table. I've got like a big map of an airship for um, this next Dungeons and Dragons session. And then I'm just going to have like this crazy air elemental come in and these tentacles that just like come out of this air elemental and just like grab, start grabbing people and my players off the ship and like throwing them into other airships and like all kinds of crazy shenanigans and chaos is about to ensue. But I need to make some more tentacles. I made one to see if I could do it, to see if I liked it, and I like it. I need to t do a lot of touch-ups, but I really like where it's going. I am going to be using this stuff this um, for this project. This is foam clay, and it is like some of my favorite stuff in the whole entire universe. And yeah, but before we, but before we get into this clay stuff, we are going to start with a basic armature. Anybody who's ever done any sort of sculpting before will know um, generally there's like an armature that goes inside of a sculpture so that it like keeps its shape, you know, y you know, right? So basically we need an armature and we need a base. So I'm going to use washers as the base and I'm going to cut a bunch of like, I'm going to cut seven now because I've, I've made one. So I'm going to cut seven, um, pieces of armature wire and then attach them to a base with hot glue. And that's where we're going to start before we get into the clay part of it. First of all, before before we start cutting armature wire, do you like my steampunk goggles? Dude, seriously, these are a little bit over the top, I think. I think they are. They actually they had like chains and stuff hanging down from them. <laughs> like they had like these chains and stuff like hanging off of them, but I couldn't because like every time I turned my head they'd like smack me in the eyeball. So I chopped the chains off of them with with my wire cutters this morning before I started filming. Oh my god. The reason I'm wearing steampunk goggles, actually the reason I wear steampunk goggles in a lot of my videos is because I absolutely freaking love them. And I absolutely freaking love being myself. I think that's another one of my life theories. Life is that... Ha ha. Is that you should be absolutely yourself, no matter what that looks like, no matter if that's weird. You should figure out who you are and be true to yourself and be absolutely yourself no matter what. Whoa, that's a bright light on my face. All right, so I'm gonna tilt the camera down and show you this next step. All right, so basically we take the wire, we bend the end, stick it right in there like that, and then just hot glue the crud out of it. This is parchment paper. You're gonna obviously wanna use some parchment paper instead of, you know, just hot gluing something straight to your crafting mat. I'm just gonna play around bending this, the wire to figure out what shapes I want my Kraken tentacles to be in. So this stuff is so squishy. It is literally some of my favorite stuff in the whole world. Okay. So first thing you want to do is you kind of want to roll it into a noodle. And I recommend using parchment paper over your crafting mat because crafting mats are non-stick, but this stuff is just so sticky and so squishy that it literally just sticks to everything. So like the more, the more you can have down for protection, 
over your surface, the better, actually. But I don't know. If you have if you have a lot of faith in your crafting mat, by all means, just use your crafting mat. But I don't have that much faith in my crafting mat. Then you just kind of work it onto your armature. And then you want to close up that gap as best as you can. And it's going to take you a little while because foam clay isn't isn't the most mal malleable clay to work with. So if you're working with foam clay, it is going to take a little while to get it on onto your armature perfectly the way you want it and to get the shape that you want it to be. But that's totally okay. I'm telling you right now, it's okay if it takes a little bit. It's okay if it's kind of wonky and difficult to work with at first. Cause we're gonna shape this thing into like the perfect shape and it's gonna be just fine. All right, so that's basically as smoothed out as I'm willing to take the time to get it. It's not absolutely perfect. But, you know, I am making a creature from my imagination that I am using to play in a game with my friends. So I am not going to be too anal about it. It's not going in an art museum. It is going on the tabletop for a gaming session or two. And then that's it. So I'm going to be super happy with this. It's not perfect, but we're going to go with it. All right, so now we're going to put the little sucker things on. So basically just get little... Get little bits of clay, roll them into balls. I have this tool. It's basically just a um, one of those tools for like doing your nails, but it also works really great for sculpting. So like once you stick a ball on there, just take it and then and then press that in there like that. There we go. We're working it on up there. And trust me, I'm not worrying about getting this perfect. I'm not worrying about getting my little tentacle suckers spaced out perfectly. I know as soon as I drop this on the table, all my players are going to start screaming at me. As soon as I start slamming it into the airships and trying to grab them off the airship and throw them into the air, they're not going to be staring at those tentacles like, oh, you didn't evenly space out the suckers right there. Oh, I see a little fingerprint right there. No, they're gonna be like, oh my God, we're about to die, everybody run. That is so cool. I think this one's my favorite, not gonna lie. I love this one. Look at this one. This one's pretty cool. Okay, so the tentacles are all sculpted. I have all eight of them ready to go. Um, They actually, they actually need to dry for about 24 hours though before I paint them. So the next step is going to be plastic dipping them. So once they dry 24 hours, it's like three o'clock I think in the afternoon right now, maybe four o'clock. So three or four o'clock tomorrow, I'm gonna take them outside. I'm gonna plasti dip them all. This is basically just like a rubber coating um, that will seal them up and you know, help them be a little bit more durable. Hello, hello, and we're back. Okay, sorry. First of all, pardon the chaoticness of the apartment behind me. It is a Sunday evening, and it's just been a fun day. We've had friends over and stuff, and I just didn't worry about cleaning up before jumping in front of the camera. So anyway, all right, here is all of our plasti dipped tentacles. Uh, we've got them all done, ready to go dry, and I'm going to do some painting this evening. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, oh dude, guys, by the way, I didn't even bother putting on makeup today. So sorry. I just wanted to jump in front of the camera and do some crafty stuff. Gideon, what are you doing? Yeah, that's right. Anyway, it's not supposed to be on my desk. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually paint the coat of white around the base and up the center because, um, the basic color scheme we're going to use here are here. I kind of cleaned this one up a little bit. I kind of really like it. Um, I'm going to probably maybe base it with some cotton or like little cotton balls or something, but I haven't figured that part out yet. But so for the little suction cups, I'm going to use, um, grape taffy color. Um, for the purple strip up the middle, I'm going to just use this violet color right here. And then for the back, I've got a pool blue. So, um, here are the three main colors I am going to be painting these tentacles. All right. So. So the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to use some thicker white to paint a white strip kind of up the middle here and paint over the base because 
this purple color when painted on black just unfortunately comes out black it doesn't um it doesn't come out purple so if you want to get that rich actually purpley color you need to paint some white um as a base to base it so anyway that's what i'm going to do on most of them this evening. I'm not really worrying about getting it perfect. It's gonna be super messy because it is just the base coat. Base coats don't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of slapping it on there, covering the suction cups, covering everything that is about to be purple. So I just put uh, the first coat of blue on. I'm going to let that dry. I don't know how well you can see it on all of them. And then I'm gonna do a second coat. And um, then I am going to start in on that purple. So then lastly, you are just going to paint those little suction cups on the tentacles, whatever color you want. I picked a, a grape taffy color, but again, you know, whatever color is in your imagination. They also look pretty cool white too, um, but I decided I wanted to uh, darken them up just a little bit, make them blend a little bit better, so. For our very last step, we are going to coat all of these tentacles in some glossy Mod Podge. This is just going to give them a nice shine. But this Mod Podge coating is also just going to help protect the paint and uh, just kind of give it a finishing touch. All right, and that's it, guys. The tentacles are all complete. Look at this one. I look at this one. They're done. Don't they look so awesome? Okay, I am going to take a minute and show you what they're gonna look like on the game table. this time guys thank you so much for watching this video I know it was a little bit late it took me longer to make these than I thought that it would but like with drawing time and all that so I am sorry this video is a little bit later than I expected it to be but anyway if you like this video, if you like videos like this, like nerdy stuff, bookish stuff, Dungeons and Dragons stuff, gamer stuff, hit that subscribe button because there's a lot more of it coming your way. And I love you guys so freaking much. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.